Hey y'all, it's Thomas Hendricks with Corona 24 in New York City. We've got a quick video for you today about the Rolex Daytona. 2023 is a big year for this watch because the Daytona is turning 60. And while no one ever knows what Rolex is working on behind the scenes, it certainly seems logical that we'll be seeing a new special anniversary Daytona this year. In the meantime, we pulled together a few things to keep in mind if you're thinking about buying a Daytona this year, next year, or after you win the lottery. Let's start with the basics. The fact remains these watches are nearly impossible to buy at retail. When I was working as a private client advisor at Corona24, it was fairly common to have buyers call in and say, I tried to walk into my local Rolex boutique to buy a Daytona or a Sub or GMT or whatever, and the staff basically laughed at me. Why is that? As many of you know, there's a lot more demand than there is supply, and even though Rolex makes about 1 million watches per year, only a fraction of those are Daytonas, and that fraction has to go to authorized dealers around the world, and many of those will end up on the gray market where they're sold by non-affiliated dealers for a higher price. This is why even with prices on the decline for Daytonas, which we'll discuss in a second, Daytonas are still selling for twice their retail price on the gray market. If you talk to the old heads, the industry veterans, they'll tell you this wasn't always the case. ADs used to have a hard time selling Daytonas decades ago, and now they're sold before they even hit the display case. Perhaps the biggest watch story of the year for 2022 was how prices for hype watches like the Patek Philippe 5711, the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, and yes, the Rolex Daytona started to come back down to earth after about five years of runaway growth. The peak happened around March, April 2022, with the price of a mint condition current production Daytona, like the 116500LN, selling for approximately three times its retail price. Geopolitical factors like the war in Ukraine and global economic factors like rising inflation and the crash of crypto have contributed to this market correction. This has created a contradictory situation where one, it's a buyer's market, and two, it's still really hard and really expensive to buy Daytona. In recent news, Rolex has launched their certified pre-owned program whereby individuals can sell their watches back to the brand and authorized dealers can sell certified pre-owned Rolex watches that have been inspected by the brand and are at least three years old. We at Chrono24 are still waiting to see exactly how this will affect the secondary and gray markets, but the consensus seems to be that these CPO Rolexes including the Daytonas, will be priced considerably higher than the market average. Side note, we do a monthly watch market series on this channel called Time is Money, so subscribe for future episodes of that, including a Rolex CPO analysis. And now for a bit of history. Everything changed, or rather things changed quite quickly in October of 2017, when a Paul Newman Daytona went to auction at Phillips here in New York. But this wasn't a Paul Newman, it was the Paul Newman Daytona, owned by the actor himself with a personalized case back. The watch sold for $17 million, the most for a wristwatch at the time, and people lost their minds. Now I have heard rumors about a certain celebrity that apparently submitted the winning bid for that watch, but no one really knows if it's true, and I certainly can't say that name on camera. The point is that that moment was absolutely pivotal for the watch market, the vintage watch market, and the Rolex Daytona itself. It turned a lot of heads in the watch world and beyond, and it was the catalyst that led to the investment boom of the last few years. Even as modern Daytonas are leveling out on the secondary and gray markets, prices for rare vintage Daytonas are still sky high. Let's hit some key dates in the Daytona timeline. That way, even if you hate this video, at least you'll learn something. 1963, the Beatles are about to make their American debut. It's also the birth year for the Rolex Daytona. The reference 6239 featured a 36 and a half millimeter case, a modified manually wound Valjoux 72 movement, and a price tag of about $200 back then. There were pre-Daytonas available before that Rolex, but we'll start with the year that the word Daytona started appearing on the dial. 1988. Rolex switches the movement inside the Daytona to a modified Zenith El Primero automatic chronograph movement. Rolex also upped the size of the case to 40 millimeters, added crown guards, and switched from acrylic bezels to all steel bezels. Zenith Daytonas, as they're known, are still quite collectible, and many believe that the use of the El Primero movement in that watch essentially saves Zenith as a company. Jump to the year 2000, Rolex replaces the Zenith movement with one of their own. The caliber 4130 powers the Daytona Reference 116520, thus creating the first in-house Rolex Daytona. 
2016, Rolex debuts the reference 116500LN, the first Daytona with the brand signature Cerachrom bezel. Seven years later, this is still the same steel Daytona reference produced by Rolex. Which brings us to our last date, 2023. No one knows what will happen, but it's an anniversary year, and the current reference, that 116500LN, is feeling a little bit stale. If you've got predictions for what kind of Daytona we might see this year, shout them out in the comments below. For our final point in this What You Need To Know video, let's do a quick buying guide. A hierarchy of sorts for the modern Daytona market. We'll look at current production Daytonas to see how they stack up against their brethren. The cheapest Daytonas on 2024 are going to be two-tone, starting around $16,000, $17,000. As usual, you'll pay more for good condition, original bots and papers, etc. Next, Foley Steel 116520 references start around $20,000 US. In general, black dials tend to be a little bit cheaper than the white dials. If you'd like a ceramic bezel, the current generation 116500LN starts to become available on the secondary market around $26,000. We see the same dial trend here as we did with the previous, where white is more expensive than the black. After that, all hell breaks loose as we get into vintage Daytonas, like the references we referenced earlier, and precious metal versions in white gold, yellow gold, rose gold, and platinum, not to mention meteorite dials, rainbow sapphire bezels, and even eye of the tiger configurations. We'll leave it there for now, and we'll be sure to make another video if, or rather when, Rolex releases a new Daytona in 2023. I'm Thomas Hendricks with Corona24. Thanks so much for tuning in. Enjoy your watches, and we'll see you next time.